How to Develop Motivation and Enthusiasm to Achieve Your Goals Motivation and enthusiasm are essential for achieving goals, whether they are personal or professional. When you are motivated and enthusiastic, you are more likely to stay focused, persevere through challenges, and take action towards your goals. In this article, we will discuss some tips and strategies for developing motivation and enthusiasm to achieve your goals. Set clear and specific goals. Setting clear and specific goals is essential for developing motivation and enthusiasm. When your goals are clear and specific, you know exactly what you are working towards, and you can measure your progress along the way. This means setting goals that are specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound, smart. Find your why. Finding your why, the underlying reason why you want to achieve your goals, can be a powerful motivator. When you understand why your goals are important to you, you are more likely to stay motivated and enthusiastic, even in the face of challenges. This means identifying the deeper meaning and purpose behind your goals. Visualize success. Visualizing success can be a powerful tool for developing motivation and enthusiasm. When you visualize yourself achieving your goals, you can create a positive mental image of what success looks and feels like. This means imagining yourself achieving your goals in vivid detail and experiencing the emotions associated with success. Break down your goals into smaller tasks. Breaking down your goals into smaller tasks can make them more manageable and less overwhelming. When you focus on completing smaller tasks, you can build momentum and stay motivated and enthusiastic. This means breaking down your goals into smaller, achievable tasks and celebrating your progress along the way. Surround yourself with support. Surrounding yourself with support can be a powerful motivator. When you have the support of others, you feel more confident and capable of achieving your goals. This means seeking out friends, family, mentors, or coaches who can offer encouragement and support. Celebrate your successes. Celebrating your successes can be a powerful motivator. When you take time to acknowledge and celebrate your progress, you build momentum and stay motivated and enthusiastic. This means celebrating your successes, no matter how small, and recognizing the effort and hard work that went into achieving them. Stay positive and resilient. Staying positive and resilient is essential for developing motivation and enthusiasm. When you have a positive mindset and are resilient in the face of challenges, you are more likely to stay motivated and enthusiastic. This means focusing on the positive aspects of your goals and progress and bouncing back from setbacks and failures. Practice self-care. Practicing self-care is essential for developing motivation and enthusiasm. When you take care of yourself, you have more energy and focus to devote to your goals. This means taking care of your physical, emotional, and mental health and making time for activities that bring you joy and fulfillment. Embrace a growth mindset. Embracing a growth mindset is essential for developing motivation and enthusiasm. When you have a growth mindset, you believe that your abilities and talents can be developed over time through hard work and dedication. This means being open to learning and feedback, and viewing challenges as opportunities for growth and learning. Find inspiration from others. Finding inspiration from others can be a powerful motivator. When you see others achieving their goals and overcoming challenges, it can inspire you to do the same. This means seeking out role models and mentors who can offer guidance and inspiration, and learning from their experiences and successes. Stay organized and focused. Staying organized and focused is essential for developing motivation and enthusiasm. When you have a clear plan and focus on your goals, you can stay on track and avoid distractions. 
This means using tools and strategies to stay organized, such as to-do lists, calendars, and time management techniques. Develop a positive attitude. Developing a positive attitude is essential for developing motivation and enthusiasm. When you approach your goals with a positive attitude, you are more likely to stay motivated and enthusiastic, even when facing challenges. This means focusing on the positive aspects of your goals and progress, and reframing negative thoughts into positive ones. Take action towards your goals. Taking action towards your goals is essential for developing motivation and enthusiasm. When you take concrete steps towards your goals, you build momentum and stay motivated and enthusiastic. This means breaking down your goals into actionable steps and taking consistent action towards them. Cultivate a sense of purpose. Cultivating a sense of purpose is essential for developing motivation and enthusiasm. When you have a clear sense of purpose and direction, you are more likely to stay motivated and enthusiastic. This means identifying your values and passions, and aligning your goals with them. Practice gratitude. Practicing gratitude is essential for developing motivation and enthusiasm. When you focus on what you are grateful for, you cultivate a positive mindset and increase your overall sense of happiness and fulfillment. This means taking time each day to reflect on what you are grateful for and expressing gratitude towards others. Keep a positive self-image. Maintaining a positive self-image is essential for developing motivation and enthusiasm. When you believe in yourself and your abilities, you are more likely to stay motivated and enthusiastic, even in the face of challenges. This means practicing self-compassion, acknowledging your strengths and accomplishments, and reframing negative self-talk into positive self-talk. Develop a support system. Developing a support system is essential for developing motivation and enthusiasm. When you have a network of people who support and encourage you, you are more likely to stay motivated and enthusiastic. This means seeking out friends, family, colleagues, or mentors who can offer emotional support, advice, and encouragement. Learn from failure. Learning from failure is essential for developing motivation and enthusiasm. When you view failure as a learning opportunity, you can use it to improve your skills and strategies, and stay motivated and enthusiastic. This means analyzing what went wrong, identifying areas for improvement, and adjusting your approach accordingly. Stay curious and open-minded. Staying curious and open-minded is essential for developing motivation and enthusiasm. When you have a curious and open mindset, you are more likely to explore new ideas and approaches, and stay motivated and enthusiastic. Experience building a working environment full of exchange and cooperation? Collaboration and teamwork are essential for achieving success in any workplace. When employees are able to work together effectively, they can share ideas, leverage each other's strengths, and achieve more than they could alone. In this article, we will discuss some tips and strategies for building a collaborative work environment. Foster open communication. Open communication is essential for building a collaborative work environment. When employees feel comfortable sharing their ideas and opinions, they are more likely to work together effectively. This means creating a culture of transparency and openness, encouraging regular check-ins and feedback, and promoting active listening. Establish clear goals and expectations. Establishing clear goals and expectations is essential for building a collaborative work environment. When everyone understands what they are working towards and what is expected of them, they can align their efforts and work together effectively. This means setting clear and achievable goals, 
outlining roles and responsibilities, and providing regular feedback and performance evaluations. Encourage teamwork and collaboration. Encouraging teamwork and collaboration is essential for building a collaborative work environment. When employees are encouraged to work together and collaborate on projects, they can leverage each other's strengths and achieve more than they could alone. This means promoting teamwork and collaboration through team building activities, group projects, and cross-functional teams. Provide resources and support. Providing resources and support is essential for building a collaborative work environment. When employees have access to the tools and resources they need, they can work together effectively and efficiently. This means providing training and development opportunities, investing in technology and infrastructure, and offering support and guidance when needed. Celebrate successes and learn from failures. Celebrating successes and learning from failures is essential for building a collaborative work environment. When employees feel recognized and valued for their contributions, they are more likely to continue working together effectively. This means celebrating team successes and milestones, recognizing individual achievements, and learning from failures and setbacks. In conclusion, building a collaborative work environment requires fostering open communication, establishing clear goals and expectations, encouraging teamwork and collaboration, providing resources and support, and celebrating successes and learning from failures. By incorporating these strategies into your workplace culture, you can create a collaborative work environment that fosters creativity, innovation, and success. TFTUC Va Kong Trung Lap Emphasize the value of diversity and inclusion. Emphasizing the value of diversity and inclusion is essential for building a collaborative work environment. When employees feel included and respected for their unique perspectives and backgrounds, they are more likely to work together effectively. This means creating a culture that values diversity, promoting diversity and inclusion training, and encouraging diverse perspectives and ideas. Encourage feedback and continuous improvement. Encouraging feedback and continuous improvement is essential for building a collaborative work environment. When employees are able to provide feedback and suggestions for improvement, they can help to build a culture of continuous learning and growth. This means soliciting regular feedback from employees, using that feedback to make changes and improvements, and recognizing and rewarding employees who contribute to the improvement process. Promote a positive work-life balance. Promoting a positive work-life balance is essential for building a collaborative work environment. When employees are able to balance their work and personal lives, they are more likely to be productive and engaged at work. This means promoting flexible work arrangements, providing resources and support for employee wellness, and encouraging employees to take time off when needed. Lead by example. Leading by example is essential for building a collaborative work environment. When leaders model the behaviors they want to see in their employees, they can create a culture of collaboration and teamwork. This means demonstrating open communication, valuing diverse perspectives, and promoting a positive work-life balance. Create a sense of belonging. Creating a sense of belonging is essential for building a collaborative work environment. When employees feel like they belong and are part of a team, they are more likely to work together effectively. This means creating opportunities for employees to connect and build relationships, promoting a sense of shared purpose and values. 
and recognizing and celebrating the contributions of all team members. Encourage autonomy and empowerment. Encouraging autonomy and empowerment is essential for building a collaborative work environment. When employees feel trusted and empowered to make decisions and take ownership of their work, they are more likely to work together effectively. This means delegating responsibilities and decision-making authority, providing support and resources when needed. and recognizing and rewarding employees who demonstrate initiative and accountability. Foster a culture of trust. Fostering a culture of trust is essential for building a collaborative work environment. When employees feel that they can trust their colleagues and leaders, they are more likely to share ideas and collaborate effectively. This means promoting honesty and transparency, avoiding micromanagement, and building relationships based on mutual respect and understanding. Encourage creativity and innovation. Encouraging creativity and innovation is essential for building a collaborative work environment. When employees feel encouraged to think outside the box and share new ideas, they can work together to develop innovative solutions and approaches. This means promoting brainstorming and idea sharing sessions, encouraging experimentation and risk taking, and recognizing and rewarding creative thinking. Provide opportunities for professional development. Providing opportunities for professional development is essential for building a collaborative work environment. When employees have access to training and development opportunities, they can build their skills and knowledge, and contribute more effectively to team projects. This means offering regular training and development programs, providing opportunities for mentorship and coaching, and recognizing and rewarding employees who take initiative to develop their skills. Foster a sense of shared ownership. Fostering a sense of shared ownership is essential for building a collaborative work environment. When employees feel that they are all working towards a common goal and share ownership of that goal, they are more likely to work together effectively. This means promoting a culture of collaboration and teamwork, recognizing and celebrating team successes, and encouraging employees to support and help each other. Emphasize the importance of respect. Emphasizing the importance of respect is essential for building a collaborative work environment. When employees respect each other's ideas, opinions, and backgrounds, they can work together effectively and create a positive work environment. This means promoting respectful communication and behavior, addressing any disrespectful behavior promptly, and providing training and resources on how to communicate and collaborate respectfully. Promote a culture of gratitude. Promoting a culture of gratitude is essential for building a collaborative work environment. When employees feel appreciated for their contributions, they are more likely to continue working together effectively. This means promoting a culture of gratitude by recognizing and celebrating employee achievements. Write a full article in English on the topic Experience Developing Skills in Risk Analysis and Assessment? Developing Risk Analysis and Evaluation Skills, Tips and Strategies Risk analysis and evaluation are crucial skills in various industries, including finance, healthcare, and engineering. These skills involve identifying potential risks and evaluating their potential impact on a project, business, or organization. In this article, we'll discuss some effective tips and strategies for developing risk analysis and evaluation skills. Understand the basics. The first step in developing risk analysis and evaluation skills is to understand the basics. This includes understanding the different types of risks, such as financial, operational, and strategic risks, as well as the tools and techniques used to analyze and evaluate risks. 
familiarize yourself with risk assessment frameworks and methodologies, such as the ISO 31000 standard for risk management. Identify and prioritize risks. Identifying and prioritizing risks is an essential part of risk analysis and evaluation. This involves assessing the likelihood and potential impact of each risk and determining which risks are the most critical. Prioritizing risks can help you focus your efforts and resources on mitigating the most important risks first. Gather data and information. Gathering data and information is an important part of risk analysis and evaluation. This means collecting and analyzing data from various sources, such as historical data, industry reports, and expert opinions. Use quantitative and qualitative data to gain a comprehensive understanding of the risks and their potential impact. Use tools and techniques. There are various tools and techniques that can be used for risk analysis and evaluation. These include SWOT analysis, helps identify strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Scenario analysis, helps evaluate the potential impact of different scenarios. Monte Carlo simulation, helps simulate different outcomes based on probabilities. Decision trees, helps evaluate different decision options and their potential outcomes. Develop mitigation strategies. Developing mitigation strategies is an important part of risk analysis and evaluation. This means identifying and implementing measures to reduce or eliminate the risks. Mitigation strategies can include risk avoidance, risk reduction, risk transfer, or risk acceptance. Develop a risk management plan that outlines the mitigation strategies and their implementation. Continuously monitor and update. Risk analysis and evaluation are not a one-time process. It's important to continuously monitor and update your risk management plan as new risks emerge or existing risks change. Regularly review and assess the effectiveness of your mitigation strategies and make adjustments as necessary. Developing risk analysis and evaluation skills, effective strategies and best practices. Risk analysis and evaluation are essential skills for professionals in various industries, including finance, healthcare, and engineering. These skills involve identifying potential risks, evaluating their potential impact, and developing effective strategies to manage those risks. In this article, we'll discuss some effective strategies and best practices for developing risk analysis and evaluation skills. Understand different types of risks. The first step in developing risk analysis and evaluation skills is to understand the different types of risks. These include financial, operational, strategic, and reputational risks. Each type of risk has its own unique characteristics and requires a different approach to analysis and evaluation. Understanding the different types of risks can help you develop more effective risk management strategies. Identify and prioritize risks. Identifying and prioritizing risks is an essential part of risk analysis and evaluation. This involves assessing the likelihood and potential impact of each risk and determining which risks are the most critical. Prioritizing risks can help you focus your efforts and resources on mitigating the most important risks first. Gather relevant data and information. Gathering relevant data and information is an important part of risk analysis and evaluation. This means collecting and analyzing data from various sources, such as historical data, industry reports, and expert opinions. Use quantitative and qualitative data to gain a comprehensive understanding of the risks and their potential impact. Use effective tools and techniques. There are various tools and techniques that can be used for risk analysis and evaluation. These include SWOT analysis, 
Scenario Analysis, Monte Carlo Simulation, Decision Trees, and others. Select the most appropriate tools and techniques based on the specific needs of your organization and the nature of the risks you are analyzing. Develop effective mitigation strategies. Developing effective mitigation strategies is an important part of risk analysis and evaluation. This means identifying and implementing measures to reduce or eliminate the risks. Mitigation strategies can include risk avoidance, risk reduction, risk transfer, or risk acceptance. Develop a risk management plan that outlines the mitigation strategies and their implementation. Continuously monitor and update. Risk analysis and evaluation are not a one-time process. It's important to continuously monitor and update your risk management plan as new risks emerge or existing risks change. Regularly review and assess the effectiveness of your mitigation strategies and make adjustments as necessary. Collaborate and communicate. Collaboration and communication are essential for effective risk analysis and evaluation. Involve key stakeholders and subject matter experts in the process and communicate the results and recommendations clearly and effectively. Collaboration and communication can help ensure buy-in and support for your risk management strategies. Developing risk analysis and evaluation skills, key steps and best practices. Risk analysis and evaluation skills are important for professionals in various industries, including finance, healthcare, and engineering. These skills involve identifying potential risks, evaluating their potential impact, and developing effective strategies to manage those risks. In this article, we'll discuss some key steps and best practices for developing risk analysis and evaluation skills. Understand different types of risks. The first step in developing risk analysis and evaluation skills is to understand the different types of risks. These include financial, operational, strategic, and reputational risks. Each type of risk has its own unique characteristics and requires a different approach to analysis and evaluation. Understanding the different types of risks can help you develop more effective risk management strategies. Write a full article in English on the topic How to Develop Self-Development Skills? Developing Self-Improvement Skills, Strategies for Personal Growth Personal growth and development are essential for achieving success and happiness in life. However, developing self-improvement skills can be challenging, especially when you don't know where to start. In this article, we'll discuss some effective strategies for developing self-improvement skills and achieving personal growth. Identify your goals. The first step in developing self-improvement skills is to identify your goals. What do you want to achieve? What areas of your life do you want to improve? This could be anything from improving your communication skills to developing a new hobby. Once you've identified your goals, you can begin to work towards achieving them. Create a plan. Creating a plan is an important step in developing self-improvement skills. Once you have clear goals, you need to create a plan for achieving them. Break your goals down into smaller, more manageable tasks, and create a timeline for completing each task. This will help you stay organized and focused on making progress. Learn continuously. Continuous learning is an essential part of personal growth and development. This means seeking out new knowledge and experiences, whether it's through reading, taking courses, or trying new things. Continuous learning can help you develop new skills and broaden your perspective, which can help you achieve your goals. 
Practice self-reflection. Self-reflection is an important part of personal growth and development. This means taking time to reflect on your thoughts, feelings, and actions. Ask yourself questions like, what did I do well? What could I have done better? What did I learn from this experience? Self-reflection can help you identify areas for improvement and develop new strategies for achieving your goals. Get feedback. Getting feedback from others is an important part of personal growth and development. This could mean asking for feedback from a mentor, coach, or colleague, or seeking out feedback through surveys or assessments. Getting feedback can help you identify your strengths and weaknesses and develop new strategies for improving. Practice self-care. Practicing self-care is an essential part of personal growth and development. This means taking care of your physical, emotional, and mental health. Some ways to practice self-care include getting enough sleep, eating a healthy diet, exercising regularly, meditating or practicing mindfulness, spending time with loved ones, pursuing hobbies and interests, get support, Getting support from others is an important part of personal growth and development. This could mean talking to a friend or family member, joining a support group, or seeking professional help. Getting support can help you feel less alone and provide you with practical strategies for achieving your goals. Developing personal growth skills, strategies for improving yourself. Personal growth is all about improving yourself and achieving your full potential. Developing personal growth skills can help you become more confident, resilient, and successful in your personal and professional life. In this article, we'll discuss some effective strategies for developing personal growth skills and achieving your goals. Set clear goals. Setting clear goals is an essential part of developing personal growth skills. When you have a clear idea of what you want to achieve, you're more likely to take action and make progress. Make sure your goals are specific, measurable, and achievable. This will help you stay focused and motivated. Create a plan. Creating a plan is an important step in developing personal growth skills. Once you have clear goals, you need to create a plan for achieving them. Break your goals down into smaller, more manageable tasks, and create a timeline for completing each task. This will help you stay organized and focused on making progress. Learn continuously. Continuous learning is an essential part of personal growth and development. This means seeking out new knowledge and experiences, whether it's through reading, taking courses, or trying new things. Continuous learning can help you develop new skills and broaden your perspective, which can help you achieve your goals. Practice self-reflection. Self-reflection is an important part of personal growth and development. This means taking time to reflect on your thoughts, feelings, and actions. Ask yourself questions like, what did I do well? What could I have done better? What did I learn from this experience? Self-reflection can help you identify areas for improvement and develop new strategies for achieving your goals. Creating a plan is an important step in developing and nurturing your potential. Once you have clear goals, you need to create a plan for achieving them. Break your goals down into smaller, 
more manageable tasks, and create a timeline for completing each task. This will help you stay organized and focused on making progress. Practice self-reflection. Get feedback. Getting feedback from others is an important part of personal growth and development. This could mean asking for feedback from a mentor, coach, or colleague, or seeking out feedback through surveys or assessments. Getting feedback can help you identify your strengths and weaknesses and develop new strategies for improving. Practice self-care. Practicing self-care is an essential part of personal growth and development. How to deal with fear and find a way to overcome it? Fear is a natural human emotion that can be both helpful and harmful. On one hand, fear can keep us safe from danger and help us avoid risky situations. On the other hand, fear can also hold us back from achieving our goals and living our best lives. In this article, we will discuss some strategies for dealing with fear and overcoming it to move forward. Understanding Fear Before we discuss strategies for dealing with fear, it is important to understand what fear is and how it works. Fear is an emotional response to a perceived threat or danger. This response is triggered by the amygdala, a small part of the brain that is responsible for processing emotions. When we perceive a threat or danger, the amygdala sends a signal to the rest of the brain to prepare the body for fight or flight. While fear can be a helpful response in certain situations, it can also be triggered by perceived threats that are not actually dangerous. This can lead to unnecessary anxiety and stress, and can hold us back from achieving our goals and living our best lives. The key to dealing with fear is to understand when it is helpful and when it is not, and to develop strategies for managing it effectively. Strategies for dealing with fear Identify the source of your fear The first step in dealing with fear is to identify the source of your fear. This means understanding what is causing your fear and why you are feeling afraid. Once you have identified the source of your fear, you can begin to address it directly. Challenge your thoughts. Challenging your thoughts is an effective way to deal with fear. This means examining your thoughts and beliefs about the situation that is causing your fear and identifying any irrational or unhelpful thoughts. Once you have identified these thoughts, you can work to replace them with more realistic and helpful ones. Take action. Taking action is an effective way to deal with fear. This means taking steps to address the situation that is causing your fear, even if those steps are small. By taking action, you can build your confidence and reduce your anxiety. Practice relaxation techniques. Practicing relaxation techniques is an effective way to deal with fear. This means engaging in activities like meditation, deep breathing, or yoga to calm your mind and body. By practicing relaxation techniques, you can reduce your stress and anxiety and feel more in control of your emotions. Seek support. Seeking support is an effective way to deal with fear. This means reaching out to friends, family, or a mental health professional for help and support. By seeking support, you can gain new perspectives and strategies for dealing with your fear and feel less alone in your struggles. Moving forward. Dealing with fear is an ongoing process that requires patience and persistence. 
While these strategies can be effective in managing fear, it is also important to focus on moving forward and taking action towards your goals. Here are some strategies for moving forward. Set realistic goals. Setting realistic goals is an effective way to move forward. This means identifying specific, achievable goals that are aligned with your values and vision for your life. By setting realistic goals, you can build your confidence and motivation, and move towards a more fulfilling life. Take small steps. Taking small steps towards your goals is an effective way to move forward. This means breaking down your goals into smaller, more manageable tasks and focusing on one step at a time. By taking small steps, you can build momentum and achieve your goals more quickly and easily. Focus on the present moment. Focusing on the present moment is an effective way to move forward. This means being mindful and present in your daily life and focusing on the things that are within your control. By focusing on the present moment, you can reduce your anxiety and stress and feel more in control of your life. Embrace failure. Embracing failure is an effective way to move forward. This means understanding that failure is a natural part of the learning process and that it is okay to make mistakes. By embracing failure, you can learn from your mistakes, become more resilient, and achieve greater success in the long run. Celebrate your successes. Celebrating your successes is an effective way to move forward. This means taking time to acknowledge and celebrate your accomplishments, no matter how small they may be. By celebrating your successes, you can build your confidence and motivation, and stay focused on achieving even greater success in the future. In conclusion, dealing with fear requires understanding its source, challenging your thoughts, taking action, practicing relaxation techniques, and seeking support. Moving forward requires setting realistic goals, taking small steps, focusing on the present moment, embracing failure, and celebrating your successes. By incorporating these strategies into your life, you can overcome your fears and achieve greater success and fulfillment. Overcoming fear, how to break free from limiting beliefs and live your best life. Fear is a powerful emotion that can hold us back from living the life we want. It can prevent us from taking risks, pursuing our dreams, and living up to our full potential. But fear doesn't have to control us. In this article, we'll discuss how to break free from limiting beliefs and overcome fear to live your best life. Identify your limiting beliefs. Limiting beliefs are beliefs that hold us back from achieving our goals and living our best life. They are often rooted in fear and can be difficult to identify. Some common limiting beliefs include I'm not good enough. I don't have what it takes to succeed. I'm too old slash too young slash too inexperienced. I'm not worthy of success slash happiness slash love. To identify your limiting beliefs, start by paying attention to your inner dialogue. What do you tell yourself when you face a challenge or opportunity? What excuses do you make for not pursuing your goals? Once you've identified your limiting beliefs, you can begin to challenge them. Challenge your limiting beliefs. Challenging your limiting beliefs is an essential step in overcoming fear. Experience dealing with depression and finding motivation? Life is full of ups and downs, 
and it's not always easy to stay motivated when things don't go as planned. Whether you've experienced a setback in your personal or professional life, it's important to have strategies for dealing with disappointment and finding motivation to keep moving forward. In this article, we'll discuss some effective strategies for dealing with disappointment and finding motivation. Acknowledge your feelings. The first step in dealing with disappointment is to acknowledge your feelings. It's okay to feel sad, angry, or frustrated when things don't go as planned. In fact, it's important to allow yourself to feel these emotions, rather than trying to suppress them. This will help you process your feelings and move on. Take a break. Sometimes, the best thing you can do when you're feeling disappointed is to take a break. This could mean taking a few days off work, going on a vacation, or simply taking a day to relax and do something you enjoy. Taking a break can help you clear your mind and gain perspective on the situation. Practice self-care. Practicing self-care is an important part of dealing with disappointment. This means taking care of your physical, emotional, and mental health. Some ways to practice self-care include Getting enough sleep Eating a healthy diet Exercising regularly Meditating or practicing mindfulness Spending time with loved ones Pursuing hobbies and interests Set realistic goals Setting realistic goals is an important part of finding motivation. When you're feeling disappointed, it can be tempting to set big, ambitious goals to try to make up for what you've lost. However, setting unrealistic goals can actually make you feel more discouraged if you're unable to achieve them. Instead, focus on setting small, achievable goals that will help you make progress towards your larger goals. Visualize success. Visualization is a powerful tool for finding motivation. Take some time to visualize yourself succeeding in your goals. Imagine what it will feel like to achieve your goals, and the steps you'll need to take to get there. Visualization can help you stay focused on your goals and keep you motivated. Get support. Getting support from others is an important part of dealing with disappointment and finding motivation. This could mean talking to a friend or family member, joining a support group, or seeking professional help. Getting support can help you feel less alone, and provide you with practical strategies for coping with your disappointment and finding motivation. We all experience demotivation at some point in our lives. Whether it's due to a setback, a lack of progress, or simply feeling overwhelmed, demotivation can be a major obstacle to achieving our goals. In this article, we'll discuss some effective strategies for dealing with demotivation and regaining your drive. Identify the source of your demotivation. The first step in dealing with demotivation is to identify the source of your demotivation. This could be a specific event, such as a failure or setback, or a more general feeling of burnout or overwhelm. Once you've identified the source of your demotivation, you can begin to address it directly. Reconnect with your why. Reconnecting with your why is an important part of regaining your drive. This means reminding yourself of the reasons why you started pursuing your goal in the first place. What motivates you to achieve your goal? What do you hope to gain from it? By reconnecting with your why, you can regain your sense of purpose and motivation. Break your goal into smaller steps. Breaking your goal into smaller steps is an effective way to overcome demotivation. When we feel overwhelmed, it can be difficult to know where to start. By breaking your goal into smaller, 
more manageable steps, you can focus on making progress one step at a time. This can help you feel more in control and motivated. Celebrate your progress. Celebrating your progress is an important part of regaining your drive. It's easy to focus on the things we haven't done yet, but it's important to acknowledge and celebrate the things we have done. Take time to celebrate each small step along the way, no matter how small it may seem. This will help you stay motivated and build momentum. Practice self-care. Practicing self-care is an essential part of regaining your drive. This means taking care of your physical, emotional, and mental health. Some ways to practice self-care include getting enough sleep, eating a healthy diet, exercising regularly, meditating or practicing mindfulness, spending time with loved ones, pursuing hobbies and interests, get support, Getting support from others is an important part of dealing with demotivation and regaining your drive. This could mean talking to a friend or family member, joining a support group, or seeking professional help. Getting support can help you feel less alone, and provide you with practical strategies for coping with your demotivation and regaining your drive. Dealing with lack of motivation, tips for finding inspiration and regaining your drive. We all experience a lack of motivation from time to time. Whether it's due to stress, burnout or a lack of inspiration, it can be difficult to get started on the things we need to do. However, there are several strategies we can use to find inspiration and regain our drive. In this article, we'll discuss some effective tips for dealing with a lack of motivation. Set clear goals. Setting clear goals is an essential part of finding motivation. When we have a clear idea of what we want to achieve, we're more likely to be motivated to take action. Make sure your goals are specific, measurable, and achievable. This will help you stay focused and motivated. Experience building a working environment full of empathy and respect. Building a supportive and respectful workplace environment, tips and strategies. The workplace can be a stressful and challenging environment, but it doesn't have to be. A supportive and respectful workplace environment can boost employee morale, productivity, and overall well-being. In this article, We'll discuss some effective tips and strategies for building a workplace environment that is filled with empathy, compassion, and respect. Foster open communication. Open communication is essential for building a supportive and respectful workplace environment. Encourage employees to share their thoughts, opinions, and concerns openly and honestly. Create an environment where employees feel comfortable expressing themselves without fear of retribution or judgment. This can be achieved through regular team meetings, one-on-one -on -one check ins and feedback sessions. Encourage collaboration and teamwork. Encouraging collaboration and teamwork is another important aspect of building a supportive and respectful workplace environment. This involves fostering a culture of cooperation and encouraging employees to work together towards common goals. Emphasize the importance of teamwork and celebrate team achievements. Encourage cross-functional collaboration and team-building activities outside of work. Promote empathy and compassion. Empathy and compassion are essential for building a supportive and respectful workplace environment. Encourage employees to put themselves in each other's shoes and to understand each other's perspectives. This can be achieved through empathy training, team building exercises, and regular check-ins. 
encourage employees to be kind and compassionate towards each other, especially during challenging times. Provide opportunities for professional development. Providing opportunities for professional development is another important aspect of building a supportive and respectful workplace environment. This involves investing in employees' skills and providing them with opportunities to learn and grow. Encourage employees to pursue training and development opportunities, and provide resources to support their professional growth. Recognize and reward achievement. Recognizing and rewarding achievement is an important part of building a supportive and respectful workplace environment. Celebrate employees' accomplishments and milestones, and recognize their hard work and dedication. This can be achieved through public recognition, bonuses, or other incentives. Create a safe and inclusive workplace. Creating a safe and inclusive workplace is essential for building a supportive and respectful workplace environment. This involves promoting diversity, equity, and inclusion and creating an environment where everyone feels welcome and valued. Encourage employees to be respectful of each other's differences, and provide resources and support for employees who may be facing discrimination or harassment. Lead by example. Finally, leading by example is essential for building a supportive and respectful workplace environment. As a leader, it's important to model the behaviors and values that you want to see in your employees. Be empathetic, compassionate, and respectful towards your employees, and encourage your managers and supervisors to do the same. Creating a respectful workplace, best practices and strategies. In today's fast-paced and competitive business world, creating a respectful workplace is more important than ever. A respectful workplace can boost employee morale, improve productivity, and create a culture of trust and collaboration. In this article, we'll discuss some best practices and strategies for creating a respectful workplace. Establish clear expectations. Establishing clear expectations is an essential aspect of creating a respectful workplace. This involves clearly defining the behaviors and values that are expected of employees. Establish policies that promote respect and inclusion, and communicate them clearly to all employees. Encourage employees to adhere to these policies and provide resources to support them. Promote open communication. Open communication is critical for creating a respectful workplace. Encourage employees to share their thoughts and ideas openly and honestly, and create a culture where feedback is valued and appreciated. Provide opportunities for employees to communicate with each other, such as team meetings and regular check-ins. Encourage collaboration and teamwork. Encouraging collaboration and teamwork is another important aspect of creating a respectful workplace. This involves fostering a culture of cooperation and encouraging employees to work together towards common goals. Emphasize the importance of teamwork and celebrate team achievements. Encourage cross-functional collaboration and team-building activities outside of work. Provide professional development opportunities. Providing professional development opportunities is an important aspect of creating a respectful workplace. This involves investing in employees' skills and providing them with opportunities to learn and grow. Encourage employees to pursue training and development opportunities, and provide resources to support their professional growth. Recognize and reward achievement. Recognizing and rewarding achievement is an important part of creating a respectful workplace. Celebrate employees' accomplishments and milestones, and recognize their hard work and dedication. 
This can be achieved through public recognition, bonuses, or other incentives. Create a safe and inclusive workplace. Creating a safe and inclusive workplace is essential for creating a respectful workplace. This involves promoting diversity, equity, and inclusion and creating an environment where everyone feels welcome and valued. Encourage employees to be respectful of each other's differences, and provide resources and support for employees who may be facing discrimination or harassment. Lead by example. Finally, leading by example is essential for creating a respectful workplace. As a leader, it's important to model the behaviors and values that you want to see in your employees. Be respectful, inclusive, and transparent in your communication with employees, and encourage your managers and supervisors to do the same. Building a culture of respect in the workplace, key strategies and best practices. Creating a culture of respect in the workplace is essential for promoting employee well-being, collaboration, and productivity. A respectful workplace environment can also help to reduce employee turnover and increase job satisfaction. In this article, we'll discuss some key strategies and best practices for building a culture of respect in the workplace. Establish clear expectations. The first step in building a culture of respect in the workplace is to establish clear expectations. This involves defining the behaviors and values that are expected of all employees.